This Brandon Shepard video got me thinking. Over time, NFL logos have gotten simpler and simpler and simpler and simpler. What if I, a movie poster designer, took these logos and added a movie poster treatment to them to make them more realistic? I took these three iconic logos, the Raiders, the Bills, and the Vikings. This is the first time I've done something like this, Ow. so there's a natural learning curve. It's a learning curve. And when I did the Vikings, the last one, I think it came out the best. Let's start with the Raiders logo. We're going to need to head over to Envato.com and pick out a great head. The cool thing about Envato.com is that it's about 16 bucks a month and 200 bucks a year for unlimited stock photography. And that, my friends, is a shameless plug. You're such a shame. Shameless ham. So be sure to use the affiliate link below. Let's type in proud strongman and see what we get. All right, now we have some old middle-aged guy looking like he's ready to box Tyson, but not very strong and not very proud. And check out this guy over here. He's sitting on his bed in a bathrobe, extremely excited, looking like he's had his first mm. evacuation in oh, over yes. a month. And then over here, we have this guy posing like he's on a casting call for the Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore suck. But to the left, we have this Chad looking smug. And now we have the same Chad looking directly at camera with that very punchable face. Perfect for the logo. First thing we need to do is drop Chad into Photoshop. And what I'm going to do is mask out his face using the pen tool. The next move is to bring in an old school football helmet. I also found this in Envato in the 3D section. I went ahead and masked that out. And then I went back to Envato and pulled two more shields, which are gonna work perfectly. Chad's face is ready to go. And so now we need to mutilate it and put the eyes where they need to be according to the logo. We're definitely doing some Photoshop surgery. Now we're gonna do a lot of heavy lifting by rearranging this face. As you can tell in the logo, it's not exactly proportional to a real human face. This is some heavy rearranging of masking and going back and forth until I have it actually looking closer and closer to the logo itself. We're also implementing the warp tool, which is perfect for this kind of a situation. Some people use liquify. I tend to use warp more often. Now we're gonna be using a whole lot of warping with this helmet to make sure that it's lining up with the logo. As you can see, this is definitely going back and forth numerous times until I get it to work perfectly. The transform tools utilized as well as the warp and more masking. Now we need to stretch the darker leather down all the way so it looks even closer like the original logo. So now we've got this stripe all figured out. We need to get rid of these circles and to do that we're just going to use the content aware tool. I wasn't quite sure what to do with the eye patch. I just made a selection and then figured I would pull another eye patch from Envato and use the texture and have it line up within the selection. Kind of some basic Photoshop 101. I wasn't able to find a Envato so I just went to Google, typed in chin strap and I saw this riddle branded chin strap which was gonna work fine. The next thing I would have to do is figure out how to add some texture to it to make it look old school. Using a little warping once again and then finally bringing in some texture I was able to get this thing to look somewhat realistic. I found these really cool shields on Envato with perfect trim for the Raiders shield. All I had to do is really mask out the trim and then warp it until I had the correct shape. Now these are warped and looking good and all I really did is made a copy and then flip them. The next move is to actually find these two swords that go behind the head. Or is that a cutlass? What? Or what is a cutlass? Let's go ahead and ask Duck Duck Go, what's the difference? Oh boy, not this cutlass. How's my cutlass running? This cutlass is actually pretty cool and reminds me of my uncle's 69 convertible. Let's see what a cutlass is regarding swords. What's the difference between cutlass and sword? According to Wikidiff, it says that a sword is a curved blade and used by sailor when boarding an enemy ship. That's perfect. I think that's what we have for our logo. I found these cutlasses on Envato.com and now as you can see, it's pretty easy just to get these sound sized up and placed behind our head. Our next order of business is adding some shading, then some grunge, then some scars, then some blood, and all sorts of Raider related elements. Now that I have every single element in place, I'm able to drop it into Camera Raw to mess around with the texture and the clarity, and finally turn it into a black and white image that is on brand with the Raiders logo. And there we have it. 
a Raiders logo done by a movie poster designer. If you guys are digging this, do me a solid and hit that like button right now. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Next up on our agenda is to do the Buffalo Bills logo. What I did is found some 3D images of a buffalo in Envato as the real life ones just didn't cut it. But this has me thinking, what is a Buffalo Bills and how did they come up with this name? Wow, according to sportscasting.com, the Buffalo mm -hmm. Bills were originally called the Buffalo Bisons, ah. but there was already a bunch of sports teams in the area called mm. the Buffalo Bisons. So they went ahead and created a mm. contest. The winner of the contest was mm -hmm. James F. Dyson, who submitted the name oh. Buffalo Bills which is actually mm. a reference to Buffalo Bill Cody. Mm. So the Buffalo Bills are actually the Buffalo mm. Bill Cody's, which is really strange, but let's just rock it. The next move is to get our Buffalo into this completely unnatural Buffalo position where it actually looks like he's spearing somebody, but I don't think we're gonna mention that to Roger Goodell. As you can see, we're using the warp tool once again, as that seems to be our go-to for this entire process. And finally, I'm able to get these hooves and legs to line up correctly. With a little bit of foreshadowing, I already had this cool Viking helmet with a horn on it, which turns out to be the best option for the buffalo horn. Next, I had to create that weird streaky logo thing and I didn't really know what to do with it. So I resorted to a default option of adding some lightning, which is basically a lightning brush with a little bit of a layer style used to create the lightning effect. Taking it one step further, I went to our smoke brush tool, added a little bit of smoke, threw in some coloring, more smoke, more coloring. In order to stay on brand for our assignment, we're gonna have to color our buffalo. So I went ahead and picked out the coloring adjustment layer, dropped it on the fur, started messing around with the colors and finally was able to get a perfectly blue buffalo. The icing on the cake is to add a lens flare over near the horn, which makes it look like this lightning is legit. With a little bit of extra shadowing, highlights, glowies, and taking this into camera raw, adjusting the clarity and texture, we're finally able to turn this logo into a mean looking buffalo. The finale of the video is working on what I believe to be the best of these logos, the Minnesota Vikings. Our first step is to look for some Vikings that are in profile that are gonna work for this project. This guy looks really cool. Let's see if we can find him in a profile. All right, I found the guy in a profile fighting another guy. I think this is gonna work just fine. Dropping our guy into Photoshop, our next move is to warp his face into this cartoonish looking logo. Once again, resorting to warp and a little bit of masking and moving body parts around. We're able to get it close enough. Now all I wanna do is find some hair. So I'm going back to Envato looking for some hair that's gonna be sufficient for his Viking mustache, as well as those large eyebrows. This is a little bit of the fun part, messing around the hair, putting it in place, masking, and finally getting it into the shape that we're looking for. Next in line is getting the helmet. I found one more cool helmet that's perfect along with these horns. I was able to mask that out and get both the horn and the helmet to line up correctly. I was able to pull in a bunch of different braids and hair from all these models, mask them out, push them all together in kind of what looks like a chaotic sequence. But with a little bit of nudging and warping, you can get them to look exactly like the logo itself. I have the hair somewhat in place. But the next thing that was starting to bother me was the chin. I used somebody else's chin and it didn't work. So I had to bring back in chin from our original Viking and basically place his skin on top so that it lined up. And with a little bit of shadowing, I was able to get this thing to look way more realistic. The more I look at this image, the more I think Hulk Hogan would have been the perfect candidate instead of this guy. Now the hair looks horrible. The colors aren't matching, but that's a really quick and easy fix by using the gradient map. Taking it a step further, I'm using the curves tool to kind of mess around with the highlights and the shadows and get this a little more three-dimensional. Now, since I designed things chaotically, the next move that I thought was gonna work is getting the coloring for the helmet. Once again, staying on brand, getting those yellows and purples from the logo itself. Because
because the hair looks really cut out, I'm gonna use a brush, go ahead and make some flies, and that will tie in our hair and make it look more realistic. A clean Viking is not a Viking in my book, so let's dirty them up with some blood splatters. Now that our image is pretty much ready to go, I'm gonna drop it back into Camera Raw, mess around with the texture, get some more contrast, and finalize this with a movie poster treatment. And like that, we have our ultra realistic Viking logo, which happens to be my favorite out of the three that I just made. Let me know if you agree or not. And if you have ideas for future logos that you want to see with a movie poster treatment, let me know in the comments below.